In this tutorial, we show you how to make a particle effect tornado, as you see over here. And uh, if you want to see how it looks in the actual render viewport, we can just go to our timeline, start from the beginning and press play. Oh, I pressed the wrong direction, apologies, and press play. And this is the effect that we have. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. Step number one, select your default cube. Press SZ 0.1. And once you've done that, you can press tab, go into edit mode, press control R, and scroll this until you've got 10 cuts. You can see the number of cuts at the bottom left corner of your screen, 10. Click. Control R, scroll up for 10 cuts, click, done. Numpad 7 for top orthographic view, scroll over here, press 3 to choose face select, select all them faces, go to object data properties, vortex group, plus sign, assign vortex group. And once you're done with that, all we need to do now is press tab, go into object mode, and now we can add our emitter, our particle settings. So we're going to press plus, leave it on emission. We're going to make this 2000. We're going to adjust the length to, let's try 400. Make the lifetime of these emissions last 400, so none of them die within this. And another very important thing, the field weight. Currently, if we press spacebar, it will all drop. So, But if we make the field weight zero, it will go up, which is what we want and that's perfect we'll come back to this in a second but let's add some force fields so we can get the desired look that we want so i'm going to press shift a for well let's create a new collection for our force fields uh, force and shift a let's add a wind force and first force if we press spacebar goes up one thing we want to adjust if we go to our particle settings we want to change it to point because when you change it to point, it just feels a little bit more natural in my view for what we're going to do next. It doesn't look great yet, but if we add another force field, Shift A, uh, some turbulence. Let's go back to frame one. Currently, it looks like that. But if we up the strength to, I don't know, three, go back to frame one. There we go. That looks more as to what we're going for. It's all over the place but going up next thing you want to add is a vortex group and if we add this the power of the turbulence might create too much force for this but it'll eventually come together but it's still not exactly the look we're going for so what we need to do Let's press Shift A and let's add a magnetic. So if magnetic was on 10, let's see what would happen. It will get stuck here. Let's press G, Z, 2. So it kind of brings it together, G, Z, 2. So G, Z, 4 in total. And let's make the strength, um, one should be, well, 0. Three should be enough. Let's see how it looks. And as cool as that looks, it's doing somewhat the opposite effect that we want. So let's make this negative 0.3 and see how that looks. Still not exactly right. But uh, I'm actually going to remove the magnet quickly for now. Delete. Let's press Shift A. Let's add a new force field called Force. Now, if we use Force as is, it will come out like this. But if we adjust this to 10 just to see what the positive force does, it spreads out. And that's quite nice. It's kind of what we want. So let's make this, I don't know, 2. And 
and that's looking pretty good. The only thing we want to do at the end here is press Shift D, duplicate this force, Z, 6, and over here we probably want to make the force field as is as well, also 2. Let's see how it looks. And there you have it. We have an interesting looking effect. Right, so this will be the first example. Now, just to go into render viewport to see how everything looks, first thing we're gonna do is press Shift A. Well, let's go to our original collection, press Shift A, mesh, and we're just gonna use an icosphere, G, X, chuck it over here, shade smooth, pull this up, go to our shader editor, press new, and press shift A, search, type in color ramp, connect your color ramp to your base color, and then press shift A, object data, we look info, there we go, and we're going to connect random to the factor, and then we're going to add a couple here, and spread it out a little bit more evenly and we're going to select each one and just add some colors to it and let's use some pastel colors then we choose this one go up and we choose this one go up then we choose this one And I guess we get to choose one more, maybe a deeper pink like that. And uh, with that selected, let's uh, create a new tab quickly. Change this to our timeline. Switch to the beginning, press play. And currently it's not being affected yet because we need to select our cube. Go to our particle settings and we need to go to our, where is it now, render, and change this into, we could choose the exact object actually, scroll out, and just choose that. And then we can make the scale the size 0 0.2, but make the randomness 1. So everything's going to be super, super random. And let's choose a background, let's make the background 100% white. And then let's change the light settings. Object data properties for the sun, make it, I don't know, 30. And then just press Control, Alt, Numpad, 0. Select the camera, press G, chuck it, I guess, over here. And let's play this out. Okay, at frame 170. We're going to hover over the focal length and we're going to press I and then we're going to press play and at frame 215 I guess we must adjust the focal length to get everything in point maybe make it 20 to 0 and press I and if we watch this animation play out I think it looks pretty decent. Please don't forget to like and subscribe.